decades, I continued to learn more from Burnham Burnham and other Aboriginal elders. In the 90s, I lived in New York. One Australia day, I sat next to Burnham Burnham by chance at a lecture. It was a great joy to catch up with our news. And it was this day when Burnham Burnham gave me the gift of this prayer and permission to use it in my interfaith work. I became very interested in other traditions, particularly when I lived in New York. My spiritual home there was the Cathedral of St John the Divine and it was the Dean there who um, himself was very interested in other traditions and so I experienced many religious leaders who came to New York, who spoke at the cathedral. Uh, I experienced many um, wonderful concerts put on by people of other traditions. And it opened me up to inquiring about other religions. <laughs> While I was in New York, I organised a series of meditation evenings from the great traditions and in finding the Jewish one, I discovered uh, Rabbi Joseph Gelberman who had the little synagogue downtown. And um, in talking to the rabbi, um, he told me that he had founded the new seminary about 20 years before to bring about more understanding between people of different faiths. And so I went to one of their information days and thought, yes, I really do feel that I have a calling to study here. Uh, it was a two-year course and um, in the first year we went deeply into many of the major world traditions. Uh, we visited um, many of the religious places of worship in New York and outside New York. And the second year was more of um, learning about creating ceremonies, whether they were marriage ceremonies, uh, naming ceremonies, um, or other rituals at different points in one, one's life. In 1998, when I returned from uh, overseas, having studied interfaith ministry, I saw that there was very little uh, interfaith activity in Melbourne and so with a group of like-minded friends we formed the Interfaith Centre of Melbourne to be virtually a full-time centre to answer questions that people might have, to um, develop programs in the arts. The arts are a very powerful way of bringing about understanding and uh, to uh, create interfaith ceremonies where people of different faiths could come together. And um, so that's what we've been virtually doing since um, 2000, really. I always say that my, my roots are in the Anglican tradition. That was the tradition I grew up in and I feel at home in. However, I do feel at home in many of the other traditions. Um, I can somehow accept that there are differences, major differences, but that's okay. Um, there is so much that we hold in common together and, and that's the most important thing. We hold the values um, that are the same, whether it's love, truth, nonviolence, an interesting thing is, happens when you uh, study and experience other traditions. It often gives you more insight into your own. It can often make your own faith stronger. Uh, sometimes there's a fear that, from some religious leaders that it might weaken your own faith. I don't think it does. It makes you question certain things, of course, but we can see things from a different angle, I think. And I just feel that if God is omnipotent, omniscient, why wouldn't that wisdom have been discovered 
all over the world in different cultures and not just in certain cultures. But I think it's when we say, well, our religion is really the only one and all the others are wrong, um, that we limit ourselves, we limit, we limit the divine. If we might not call the divine God, but we limit the divine and say, well, you know, God only appeared to this group of people or that group of people. I don't know that, that what we do can stop world wars or anything like that, but just one example um, of changing people's perceptions. Um, back a few years ago, we brought out an art exhibition from the National Gallery of Jordan called Breaking the Veils, Women Artists from the Islamic World. And there were about 64 artworks by 52 women from 21 Islamic countries. And uh, some people who came, who were really well-traveled, well-educated, said, um, you mean women are allowed to paint in Islamic countries? So we have these perceptions that we get through the media and we have no real idea of a lot of positive things that are happening in other countries. And so really the veils were being broken from our eyes. <laughs> um, although the art exhibition was called Breaking the Veils, Women Artists from the Islamic World. It was really about us and changing our perception. So that's, that is just one ex example of um, bringing about more understanding through the arts. There are very, it's a very powerful medium. Thank you.